Hi, and welcome to my channel. My name is Kim, aka the Booker Harlot, because I love all things Booker Prize related. So today is the day. The winner is going to be announced very shortly, and I am super excited to find out who they picked. So I'm going to film a little bit of a live reaction, but before we go to that, I thought I would discuss a little bit about the shortlist and who I think is going to win. So let's get going. So there are six books on the shortlist and I thought I would take this time to uh, rank all six in terms of my opinion. And this is just my opinion, but uh, I always think it's interesting to do this. So if I had to rank the shortlist in number six would be If I Survive You by Jonathan Escoffrey. The reason I would put this in sixth place is because while it is a series of interconnected short stories, I found it very fragmented. Um, this is very much the story of immigration and not knowing who you are and not fitting in and being between races and being between places. And I don't think that this was resolved, even though we saw the main character um, in teenagehood and in adulthood. Also, it's a very male-driven cast. I really think that what's missing from these uh, short stories is the uh, voice of the mother. I would have liked to have heard her experience because she was the only one that came from the islands, went to Miami, and then immigrated back. Uh, so that's in sixth place. In fifth place, I would put This Other Eden by Paul Harding. Um, well, this was an enjoyable read, and my gosh, the first opening scene from this book is amazing. If you haven't read this book, just read the opening scene. It is absolutely stunning. But I wish that Paul would have kept that up throughout the entire book. I really felt like the narrative pushed back the reader and kept me at a distance from the character. So while these characters are going through all sorts of horrible things and racism and torture and them, uh, the society coming into their own Eden and wanting to push them out, I didn't feel engaged with any of the characters and I didn't care about them. So that's why I would put this in fifth place. In fourth place is Western Lane by Chetna Maru. And I did enjoy this short and sharp book. It is about a family uh, in which they lose their mother and the three sisters are trying to navigate that loss and also deal with their father. And it results in their mourning sort of being funneled into the squash court. Um, there was a lot of squash in this um, book and it did play well in terms of using that as a metaphor as to how all the characters were dealing with grief. But in the end, I really felt that it lacked something and I thought that the ending was completely predictable. So that is number four. And in third place is a Canadian. Uh, Study for Obedience by Sarah Bernstein. She just won the Giller for this uh, book. And this is very interesting and very experimental, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. And I will reread it. It is one of those books that is meant to be reread. And it is very much an internal dialogue about a woman who uh, leaves her home to go take care of her brother. And if anything, I would probably call this a little bit of a horror story. Um, there is very much an unreliable narrator, narrator, but I did enjoy this book, but I'm just not going to rate it as number one. So this is number three. Now, my last two choices, which you can probably guess if you're familiar with the um, shortlist, uh, I go back and forth on, I would not be upset if either one of these books uh, won 
the prize. But for now, I am going to stick to my guns. And in second place, I'm going to put the Bee Sting. There are so many balls by uh, Paul Murray. Now, this chunkster of a book is amazing. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I loved all of the um, different segments. There's five segments and it is about a family who is imploding and each segment is about a different character and in the end they all the voices come together. Each voice, each character is done so well and I really think that he is able to capture uh, a young boy of 12, a, a teenage girl, a, um, a mother and a father and it is extremely suspenseful and it comes together in such an amazing way and the ending is just jaw dropping. Now this book did take me a long time to read. It took me over a month because I kept having to set it down and digest it and that's probably the only reason that I didn't put it in first place. So in first place, as you can guess, is Prophet Song by Paul Lynch. I adored this book. I could have read this book all in one go. I had to stop myself and actually film a little reaction to it um, for a video, which I will link in the description box below. There'll be uh, links to all of my individual reviews of the Booker Prizes from this year. Uh, this was so suspenseful in the same way that The Birthday Party by Laurent Mauvignier was. Uh, this takes place over a year, whereas The Birthday Party takes place over four days, but so finely crafted in terms of weaving all the different threads of a thriller together, uh, and not in the typical genre thriller way. This is also about uh, motherhood and what do you do to keep your family together? So it's set in Dublin. There is a uh, government that is taking over, evoking emergency measures, and slowly everybody is losing their rights and people are disappearing. The father disappears um, in this book and then uh, civil war has started. And the way that civil war is depicted um, is absolutely so well done. It reminded me of uh, Black Butterflies by Priscilla Morris, uh, which was also stunning. Um, and the way that the color white and nature is woven through to depict the mother, whose name is Eilish, to depict her anxiety and what she's going through is brilliant. So I'm going to pick this as the book to win. And uh, I am going to queue up my iPad and watch the ceremonies and hope to see you in just a couple of seconds. So I've been watching the ceremony and Wednesday has decided to join me so I will try not to be too enthusiastic when they announce the winner otherwise I will get clawed. But Essay is just about to announce the winner so let's find out. Yes! Oh I couldn't be happier I, and the predictions were all about it had to be a Paul because of course there's so many Pauls on this list. So congratulations to Paul Lynch and thank you so much to the Booker Judges and the Booker Prize. It has been an absolute thrilling season and I am so delighted that my pick won. And thank you to you, the viewer. I appreciate you spending your time here with me. Um, please like and subscribe and put your comments down below. Who was your choice to win? What did you think of this year? It was a very controversial and very experimental um, choices this year. Uh, the judges were very, very different. So um, I will leave you with the closing shots and 
<laughs> some of the shenanigans from my fur baby. And I hope to see you very shortly. The month of December, I'm going to be doing a Vlogmas. So from December 1st to December 25th, you're going to get a short little video about uh, short stories and knitting. So thanks so much for joining me. I have absolutely loved this Booker season. I cannot wait until next year and I will be covering the Booker International shortlist Canada Reads this year, as well as the Women's Prize and of course my beloved Booker Prize. So thanks again and see you soon. Bye.